Well, next, these three charming ladies lead Macbeth to conclude the fastest way to the thrones through death. But should he really murder Scotland's king, Macbeth's not cruel at heart. He cannot bring himself to kill his kin. He's changed his mind, but Lady Macbeth is differently inclined, and she has ways to move a man, you'll find. If it were done when it's done, then twere well were done quickly. The assassination could trample up the consequence and catch with his surcease success. But this blow might be the be-all and end-all here. But here upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instructions, which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust, first as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host, who should against the murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan half born his faculty so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity, like a naked newborn babe striving the blast, or heaven's cherubim, horsed against the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow this horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. <clears throat> I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, only vaulting ambition, which or leaps itself and falls on the other. How now? What news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which should be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Had it slept since, and waits it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteem'st the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat of the adage? For thee, peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time, nor place did that adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now just unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that melts me. I would, well it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless scums and dashed its brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail... We fail, but screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not fail. Tonight, when Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him? His two chamberlain will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory the water of the brain shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason not a limbic only. When in swinish sleep his drenched nature lies as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not place upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men children only, for the undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two in his own chamber, and use their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive another when we shall make our griefs and clamor upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time of fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. 